welcome back, friends. So let's use a quote, one of my favorites from Therese of Lisieux. Everything is grace. Yes. So yeah. beauty, poetry, creation, and garden are, are ideas, concepts, ways of expressing that kind of are in this fourth book, The Beatific Vision, The Presence of God That We Experience While in the World. Paul, speaking in first person, and for him, he's not talking an abstract concept. He will state, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. He speak in first person. The transfiguration. The apostles were stunned at, you know, the beauty and dignity and divinity of Christ. Um, so th this discussion of, of the great masters, and if you get to know people who have a deep spiritual walk, is both a private and difficult experience to describe and oftentimes figurative and poetic language, even more so is used. Um, fruit, uh, when man has his eyes set on the prize of union with God, um, it, it is evidenced in um, beauty. So in the high middle ages, there was a concern for this union with God. And so we saw it in um, uh, the uh, cathedrals, uh, the architect, the music, the stained glass, the paintings, scholastic theology, such as Thomas Aquinas. And even today, we see when this high desire for union with God is expressed, we see this overflowing beauty. A&M just finished a over 10 year process of building a brand new church. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It was a three hour dedication and many, many of the faithful had tears in their eyes. Um, some were say it is was the best liturgy. The oil, you know, Bishop Strickland was there. Um, time flew by. No, three hours time flew by they don't know where time went and that is today here and now that true sense of connecting with this marvelous presence of god um because time right we're outside of time that's one of the one of the attributes right absolutely yeah i think that we um you're you're right when when you see that shift from the from prose really to poetry right there there's something when when the mind can't can't articulate it but it does it does kind of big the question a little bit about i mean it is a beautiful thing to think about places like a m because i do think that maybe um satan is so up in arms right now because there is a mini renaissance that is going on you know in, in small little areas Churches that had been, you know, really the iconoclasts of um, the people from Vatican II, and you know, I don't have any other way to to describe them. It was an iconoclastic movement. The destruction of the churches. Uh, they were. I, I used to joke about how when we lived out in Northern Virginia, um, my sister-in-law used to say that Satan took one look at the churches and decided, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> that no one would ever want to worship them because they were so ugly. Um, but that it does beg the question as to why were, you know, why was there so much beauty in the Middle Ages? What, what was the driver? I mean, you know, I, I think I've said this before that the first time that I went to France, um, as a young high school student, you know, it was right after between my freshman and my sophomore year, you know, to leave my little town and get gone. That had beautiful little churches, you know, I mean, it really did. But walk into the magnificence of Notre Dame or into Chart Cathedral, it was an immediate awareness that superstition couldn't have built that. 
And, uh, and I think that we are really kind of falling victim to, to a demonic superstition, shall we say? That's the driver of all of this ugliness. And that's why little pockets of grace, and that's what you were saying before, you know, St. Therese, uh, St. Therese of Evola, everything is grace. These little pockets of grace are, are given to us because it goes back to that concept that we'll, we'll, never, we'll never have the fullness of the glory of God here on earth, but we will get glimpses of it because it is the glimpses that build our faith. And you wonder how, what is the level of revival that needs to take place to, to bring people back to the level of faith that allowed a man to lay the foundation stone of Notre Dame knowing that there was no lively hope that even his grandson might hear the steeple bell ring, right? How do we get people to build and to like with this concept of the garden, how do we get them to labor and toil to the end to an eight, or even to begin? Like, how do you get people to, to plant the seed? How do you get them to, to hoe it and to till it and to, to sweat it out in the hard parts so that they can get to the beauty that's at the end? I think really maybe that's the maybe that's the real question that we're asking. How do we motivate uh, a people who has lost that sense of the sacred, that sense of poetry? You know, imaginations being shrunk, um, thinking that everything is just material as opposed to material. Well, how does how does Aquinas say it? Grace building on nature, right? That nature exists, but only as the window or the the means to the next level. Well, we thank God for guiding us in this conversation because how do we motivate? Well, let us turn in the next episode to John of the Cross and see what his opinion is in this matter. Till then, my friends, Fide Seraccio.